schedule with the student. We have to schedule an IEP meeting, have to get with you guys, have to get with the IEP writer. Um, and it causes, um, you know, lots of delays in, in trying to move forward with the student. So I think this is actually gonna be better for us because you guys, this is your caseload. You know if the student is there, you know if they're engaged, uh, you know if they're uh, needing a plan. So I've kind of color coded the four weeks. So this is like the first week that you'll, you'll pick that next week and start tracking this. All right, then the next week, of course, is color coded in the darker green. So I want you to track this for the four weeks. You're, all you're doing is tracking that IEP attendance because we really need to look at, so for example, if Mickey Mouse is attending these classes or he's not attending, but he's still passing, he's still making progress in OLS, then let's really look at that. Does he need this much time? Do I need to pull him out this much time? Do, can he better use that time to be working in the OLS? Do you see what I'm saying? Um, is he also, a, uh, I know at the middle school and high school, y'all don't do flex plan at the elementary, do you, Kelly? That flex? We do for some, if they okay. apply. I, I've been a little confused as to whether SPED qualified for that because I had an advisor tell me that SPED students could not be on flex. And okay. Would, well, we, that we do me. have SPED students. Okay, yeah. no, we do have special ed students that are on flex and they may just not have understood that. Um, but we do have students that are on flex program because um, especially at middle school and high school, but the, the difference is that they will have to, they will be required to attend uh, your small group because that's in the IEP. But that's one reason that I want you to kind of track this as well, because if I have a student that I'm requiring to come to resource, uh, 60 minutes twice a week and then he's also attending gen ed courses you know all day and is this student passing is he really needing this assistance for me you know is that deficit there um, not saying we're not going to provide services but at the same time I feel like sometimes we just overwhelm our students with so many class connect sessions and so many opportunities to help you um, and I know that you guys can agree with this I know Kelly can um, you know so many times we're like I know you probably feel that way with this chart. It's like, I'm trying to do my job and I, I don't need one more thing to quote, help me. I mean, <laughs> you know, we're sometimes get good at that. And so I just wanna make sure that we are doing exactly what the students need in order to be successful because the OLS is that first level of instruction. And one thing we need to get our, our students to realize is that, okay, do you need that retalk? Hit the play button again. It's okay to go right back through that same lesson again. You know, it's not necessarily that they need to come to you. Maybe they just need to, they were, they were active and weren't really paying attention. And then the second time through, oh, I kind of get it now. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, have you ever watched that movie and you think you walk away and say, oh, that was a great movie. And your friend's like, oh, let's go back to the movies. And you go and you watch it the second time. You're like, you see something you didn't see the first time. You know, same kind of concept with the OLS. Uh, students, you know, if they'll just kind of slow down, but at the same time, I need to give them time to do that. And so, um, and that may be all they need. That may be all they need is just a student check-in like what we saw a while ago, the 15 minutes. Um, so I just wanted to make sure, and so I've got some Q&As here that uh, Jen Howard sent me a list of Q&As and that she had questions about. So I wanted to make sure that we all understood and I'm gonna send everyone these because it was really good questions that she had. Um, so she said, is there a process for students not logging in or attending? If they're not logging in or attending, then I want you to make the phone calls, you know, send the emails, do the running notes and TVS. Uh, those that you've emailed and you've set up one-on-ones and they're still not responding, that's when we're gonna have that IEP, okay? So if you've set up those IEP, if you set up those one-on-ones, you've been doing those phone calls, nothing's happening, then you need to contact that IEP writer. Let's go ahead and get that IEP meeting scheduled so that we can discuss their engagement. Again, you're documenting that in the TVS. Uh, now, as far as referring students, advisors used to do the um, refer the students for tier meetings. That will now be you guys. But what you're going to do is once we've had that IEP meeting and you've scheduled that meeting, the parent still doesn't show, they're a no show, but we're gonna document in the IEP, the writers know exactly what to do. They're gonna document that, you know, there was an engagement IEP meeting held because, you know, Here's the thing when it gets down to special ed, we have to determine, is this the proper placement for the student? Is this the right LRE? Maybe virtual is just not working for them. Do you see what I'm saying? And so, but we're gonna do everything we can to make sure we cross all of our T's and dot all of our I's. But after we've had that IEP meeting, if they're still not showing up, then you can refer them to Kathy. And it's just a matter of sending Kathy 
you know, an email and letting her know that there's false attendance, uh, there's some truancy here. And then about the, as far as escalating it, you can do flex plans. Again, um, I think somebody said you do them very minimally at the elementary level, and I do understand that. Um, but if you do have a student who's doing extremely well, who's, who's passing, who's, who's doing well, then we can give them that option. Okay, so it's okay. So that's part of what this is designed for, is to just, just to kind of say, hey, you know what, Mickey's doing so good, and he's actually been coming to maybe half of his classes, perhaps I need to cut back on his required small group time. But, and remember, an IEP is a living document, meaning that if you cut back on services and you realize, hey, he's starting to slide back in there, we can always come back and add the services back. Does that make sense? But I'm just trying to make sure that we're, we're not overdoing everything, but at the same time, not underdoing. Because one, um, one of the things that came up, and I'll show you this example, and I know this teacher is doing an, an amazing job, all right, but this particular student, because his IEP, the way his IEP is written, he was to get ELA and math 90 minutes twice a week, and then he was supposed to get science once a week for 45 minutes. So at the end of that four week period, he was supposed to have had 700, let's see, he was supposed to have had, um, here it is, 720 minutes for ELA and 720 minutes for math and 180 for science. Well, in reality, he got 210, 270, and then 480 on the science. So see how it was kind of skewed? So all the, even though he was getting great services, and he got what he needed, his IEP said he needed more. So then I have to ask myself, did he really need that much? What do we need to do? We need to pull that team back together and say what? He really doesn't need that full 90 minutes because he's, he's, and this is a self-contained student. And so part of the reason that his science was so much is because she's doing lots of hands-on classes with him in science and doing experiments. And guess what? He's getting more out of that than he would be sitting in class reading another book. So this is really just to let help us to see, you know, are the students needing those services? Does that make sense, guys? Okay, because I know it was confusing when I first sent it out, um, but I wanted you guys to see why we're doing it and what we're trying to do. I'm not saying that we can't that we can't go above and beyond, but 120% that's that's a lot. We are required by the IEP to give out 8,825 minutes. And we offered them a total of 10,620. And guess what? That's not only minutes on a student's schedule, but that's minutes on your schedule too. Okay, think about that. You know, how many classes have you guys scheduled and maybe uh, someone didn't show up? I hear you guys say that a lot, right? Okay, and, and there's a reason they're not showing up. Either they're not showing up because they, they have, they're busy doing something in OLS. It's possible that another optional class was happening that they, hey, we wanna go there and I'm passing, so why do I need to go here? You know, just trying to figure out what's going on, trying to get down to the nitty gritty so that we can offer exactly what the student needs, make them required to come exactly where they need to come so that we're meeting the services that are required by the IEP. Does that make sense? That way when somebody, because you wouldn't believe how many uh, phone calls I get of, you know, my IEP is not being held, my IEP is not being followed. And I pull up the IEP and I'll see where, okay, the IEP says that you're gonna get 120 minutes of small group instruction, uh, 30 minutes here twice a week, 30 minutes here twice a week. Well, Alva is giving you 45 minutes twice a week and they're get here and here and a 30 minute one-on-one. -on -one. So instead of 120 minutes, I'm actually giving that student 100, uh, 240 minutes. So I'm also, I'm giving them twice as much time, but by doing twice as much time, I'm also putting twice as many things on their schedule. Does that make sense? So just trying to make sure they need it. All right, are we going this for students on caseloads for four weeks? Yes, uh, okay, all students. Now, uh, speech and language, no. Your SLI, if they are SLI only, uh, even though I know that you're the case manager, but you can't track that, that's a whole different tracking system. This is strictly your special ed. Uh, an SLI, that's, a, that's an RSM tracking thing. We've got that covered, okay? Uh, the way you'll handle the SLIs is you'll get the email from the RSM because they do this there. They're the ones who send you that email saying, Cynthia missed speech three times, she's non-compliant. That's how you'll deal with them. Does that make sense? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, when you get those non-compliant emails from uh, ALVA related services, okay? Um, if students do not have class with the teachers, they qualify for flex plan. 
If the employee does not count towards our small groups, also the class. Okay, so if they do not have classes with other teachers, do they not qualify for a flex plan? Um, I don't, the students who qualify for a flex plan, there are guidelines to that. They must be passing. They must be like in good, you know, academic standing. Uh, they must be like, you know, attendance must be caught up. They can't be truant. Um, but if they're on the flex, does that not count towards our small groups? If they're on flex, does, yes, if they're on the flex plan though, and they're in special ed and special ed says that they have to, that they're supposed to take ELA twice a week, they have to come to your small group. If that's the only thing that's in the IEP, they can miss everything else, but they cannot miss your small group. Does that make sense? So, yeah, I, I actually have a question on that. I, I received um, an email just recently. I had one of my students switch to the flex program and I was directed to switch their classes mm -hmm. to optional, but it's on their IEP. So do we need to re-meet as an IEP team if the parent and the student are not wanting to yes. attend? Yes, if okay. they're not wanting to attend because your IEP legally, remember that IEP is a legal binding document. And if it says that, that he will attend that, well, if it's an optional, then, you know, why are we offering it? You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, yeah, it's like, so does he qualify for special ed? That's my next question to the parent, not you. <laughs> And yeah. then, and then I, and then I have another just clarifying question. Um, so a lot of my students, if they tested below basic, if their IEP says that they're getting two days a week of ELA instruction and two days a week of math, I currently have them in four days a week. Right. So should, should that be changed? Is that over providing services? I don't think it's unnecessarily, but how, how do we handle that? Okay, because you're, uh, remember you're, you're going by the IEP, okay? Mm -hmm. And so two days a week must be the IEP deficits, okay? Mm -hmm. But if they're below basic, the other two days, you're reteaching the OLS. Okay, so, just yeah. wanted to clarify. Okay, perfect, That's, thank you. Mm -hmm. So yes, so it's the four times a week. And so your two classes count towards that four times. Does that make sense? So yeah. Uh, if class is just us, do we put resource room? You are, yes, your resource room. That's correct. Your resource. We still invite. Yes, you can still invite SLI to class as optional. Always invite them as optional um, because there again, when you're doing the tracker, when you're doing the trackers, you will keep up with SLI, whether they're passing, whether they're engaged and whether they're attendance. OK, so so you may want to go ahead and stick them on the tracker. I just you don't necessarily have to track their speech service is what I'm saying. Does that make sense? I have two. I was told to mark them as optional. Okay. Optional. Okay. SLI. Yes. Does so, four weeks. Miss Mayo, like, well, I'm, I'm, yeah. conf Oops. I'm sorry. I just, I was confused by that. So okay. I have SLI students, mm -hmm. but they're not, if they're, if they're below basic, they're mm -hmm. required four times a week. So that's okay. how they're in class. That okay. wouldn't be optional. That would, is that correct or not? Yes. What you're tracking, mm -hmm. Debbie, is strictly the IEP. Okay. Right. That, right. Uh, yeah. But, but, but so that doesn't have anything to do with how they're scheduled because they're scheduled like a gen ed kid four they're times right. a week because that's what they are. Exactly. Gotcha. Right. Okay. And so, and so your SLI student, so let me go back to that little tracker. So your SLI student, what you're going to be tracking on them let me find my share button. I can't keep up with everything. I have too many monitors. <laughs> okay, so for that SLI student, um, because see the area of service here would be speech. And so see the speech is what he has because, and because we know that, and like I said, the, the RSM are the ones who are keeping up with that. So if you get a, um, you know, total minutes is, you know, you'll have all of that there because it's speech. But what you're going to have to do here is, is he attending class? Okay. Is he passing? Uh, looking at that tracker. And so you're going to have to, that's where you're going to come in here is, you know, the, the go tracker. He might be speech, but his tracker color might be yellow. Do you know what I'm saying? The little go, the little go box. And if he's yellow, then that's where you're going to have to address that with, you know, looking at his schedule. Like you said, he's in there four days a week, but then looking at that tracker, is he in the OLS? How much behind is he in the OLS? And then that's when you'll say, you know, you need to do these many lessons to get caught up. Uh, you need to do uh, attend at least two of my classes next week for this, just like you would a gen ed student. But you don't have to track, you don't have to track this. You do not have to track the section here about the IEP time. Does that make sense? Yeah. So he'll be on here. You just don't have to go hunting down. Did he go to speech class? <laughs> okay. Because they'll they'll tell you they'll tell you that um, the four weeks retract be consistent. 
Um, you know, preferably, but I gave you guys till like the end of March, you know, because we got testing coming up. We've got the, um, uh, the capital day, you know, the in-person gonna miss. So that, that day of classes would be the day that you reviewed the OLS. So that Tuesday and Thursday are the days that you're hitting those services from the IEP, the goals from the IEP. Does that make sense? Nobody's saying anything? Anybody? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Okay, yes, that's what. Okay, now Kelly, that was the question where I'm so glad Kelly's here because each grade level is different. And who, was it you, Amber, asking me about the way that it shows up on the, what was it you were asking? Okay, now, so explain that to Kelly because it's some way that the trackers are pulled for elementary, Kelly, and if they don't put them as required for the other two days, then it flags that they weren't invited four days. What was that? How did you say that, Amber? Yeah, this this is going to um, totally skew our metrics that yeah, they, on the big yeah. K-12 tracker. So um, it, it may be that their instructional levels are going to have to be marked according to their required IEP classes because I don't. So were y'all making were you making the all the stuff required? Uh, so you're so that's why we you think that's why our numbers were big then because you were putting things as required even though they weren't required for the IEP. Is that what you're saying, Amber? Okay. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so, but that, okay, but, the, but they were coming to the required IEP classes, right? Okay. Okay, so, but Kelly, how does that, that, that messes your, your metrics up because he's below, is he below basic, Amber, is that what you're saying? Okay, gotcha. So, so our our total view action instructional levels have to correlate with the number of invites. So if they're marked below basic in TVA, they need to have four invites for, let's say they're below basic for ELA, they have to have four required invites um, in Class Connect in order for the metric to be blue for that student, that they're getting the required number of classes. 
So it sounds like special ed doesn't need to mark instructional levels according to the MAP instruction level that it sounds like special ed needs to go in and mark instructional levels based on IEP class requirements to match the class connect invites so that the metrics won't that the metrics will talk to each other the right way from total right, view action yeah, to that's, class that's connect. What, that's what we were told to do. That's what we mm -hmm. were told to do. Whatever they whatever you require yeah, them, then you map it. Mean. Then that's what that's what you put as their TVA instructional level, whatever they're required. So if they're required twice a week, regardless mm -hmm. of how they were tested, they're put proficient in TVA. That's that's what we were told. Right. And I don't know about like with you guys, but like my class, oh, go ahead. Right. Okay, let me see. We okay. You know what? I think this can be fixed all by the naming conventions. Uh, let me find that. Don't do you guys have that naming convention um, tool? the way you name your classes it's the way that you uh, yes yeah i think that's right i think that's i think that would solve the problem um because then i could then i would be looking for strictly the name of the course versus and you would also be looking for that name of the way you named it so that you would know that it was special ed uh. I know, I know. Right. Right, right. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, yes. So, and I will find that name. Let me send you that naming convention. So, yes, and see that that way. When we're looking at the name of the session, then you can make it required to match. So, I don't want to mess up Kelly's K twelve matrix. So, Kelly, they can they. So, Kelly, tell us how to fix it now. If naming convention will fix special ed, how? Because like like Deb said, they've been told to mark it one way. What do we need to do here? Because again, though. I don't want to confuse them because it's like, oh, like you said, Amber. I mean, I was getting confused listening to you there too. Um, no, no, you're fine. No, <laughs> trust me, you're fine. So, you know, and, uh, and, and Debbie, where did Debbie go? Oh, did Debbie leave? Uh, there she is. Oh, there she is. Will you disappear on my screen? <laughs> All right. So, so Debbie, you, you're understanding it as well. So do you think then Debbie mark them if you marked them below basic? Okay. That means they're required to come four days a week. But on two of those sessions, you will name it the RES, which will pull it out and be the special ed group. And the other two, you wouldn't put the RES. Does that make sense? It does, except, I mean, we get a little sticky because mm -hmm. like I have a speech student, speech only, SLI only, mm -hmm. who is, she's basic for math. So she comes four days a week. Okay. But she is in those four days with other kids who are special ed kids who only need two days a week mm -hmm. or um, I don't know what the rest of that group is. But it's, you know, she's not in a class by herself and mm -hmm. she doesn't have anybody else who qualifies with her. She's in with the special ed kids. So I, I don't know how to change the naming convention just for her because there's other kids in there. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, exactly. Because yeah. she doesn't need, you're saying that she doesn't need the resource class, but it is the resource class. 
well, yeah, because that's all I got. I mean, otherwise exactly. it'd be one on one four days a week with her, which. Well, um, <laughs> so so your special ed kids, though, because you do have all special ed kids, did they all they all tested below basic more or less? Well, now or... to, uh, I do have one student who's not special ed at all. And she's okay. on my list. So just okay. to let you know that. Okay. But um, oh my goodness. Um, let me let me share my screen yeah. with you guys uh, real quick. Yeah. Um, I think though, I, I still think that it might work, but I'm glad we're, we need to talk it out. Okay, so this is the naming convention like we were talking about. So instead of RES, it's actually REC right here. See that resource classroom? So, and then we, we're using the CTC co-talk classroom, all right? And then for some of those, as I showed you, some of them said consult. Uh, we need to make sure that we have that consult right there, C-O-N added to it. So I'll send you guys this list too, to make sure that everybody has this. All right, can but Debbie. You, can, I'm, I'm sorry, first. can you clarify, when would we use consult? Uh, if it's in the IEP, it, only if it's in the IEP. That, that's what I was gonna tell you, cause see, I have this okay. one. I had this one student and it was a, uh, it was an odd thing that it showed up that way. Um, right here, say this, uh, this student right here, he had, um, see how it says weekly consult. <laughs> so, yeah, it was like saying, I didn't know how to find that. I didn't know if that was offered because it wasn't tagged. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah. That's, yeah. A couple of my kids have transferred in with that. So it was yeah. just a short time. And then it, and then of course we changed it, but. Right, yeah. But yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's weird. Um, so I'll send you guys that naming convention, but let's get back to this, what you were saying, Debbie. So here's the thing, you're teaching, you've got four days a week and the kids are below basic. Okay, but that little girl. So what you'll do though is two days of those will be titled math REC for resource class. And so instead of her coming on Monday and Wednesday to the resource class, maybe she could just come on Tuesday or Thursday because it's the same kids, right? More or less. And so, and then you could, she could come on Tuesday or Thursday where you don't have the REC. So it doesn't pull that she's been pulled into a special ed resource class because it's the same kids. Does that make sense? Like, let's say that Monday and Wednesday are the, uh, I know, I know, that's why I said I got I have to talk it out. Um, so Monday and Wednesday are the two days that you're going to work on IEP goals and deficits. So all those students who have that goal written and they're required to come two days a week will get that instruction on Monday and Wednesday. On Tuesday and Thursday, you're still going to have the same kids, but now you're going to be working on OLS, like Okay, let's all do lesson three together. Now let's do lesson four together and it's OLS. So Monday and Wednesday, your naming convention will have the REC indicating that's the special ed required class. The Tuesday, Wednesday will just simply have math without the REC and she could be in one of those that doesn't have the REC so that she doesn't get pulled into as being sent to a required special ed class. Does that make sense? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that. yes. The, uh -huh. on, the only thing that, that I was, that confuses me is that she is basically a gen ed kid because she's only right. speech and language. And she, she happens to be, I didn't realize this. I just looked at my notes. She's below basic, which she ah. still needs four days. You gotta come, which, I see what you're saying. But, you know, ah, and and so even if she's basic, she needs four days. So gotcha. okay. gen ed says four days. So how do I, how do I get her four days? Well, uh, it, yeah, no, go ahead, Amber. I'm sorry. Yes. There's 
So she wouldn't necessarily have to go by what her testing says, correct? Like even though her testing says four days a week, you're going by, because she's special, you can treat it differently, correct? Is that what you're saying, Amber? Right, that's that, right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. See, I don't either. And so that's 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 where but that's where that's where it's gonna come in at right there. But like you said, Amber, if that student is needing that extra help, then by all means we need to reconvene the team and add that service in so that she is required per the IEP to come to those small groups because it is possible. I mean, once you qualify for special ed, you get it. You know, even though she's, even though she qualified as speech, she can still get math small group, reading small group. She can get all small groups we can give her, you know? Yeah. Does she still, does she need them? Debbie, do you see that she's needing those classes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's a, that's an easy fix. And that's, and Amber, you hit the nail on the head. Those kids do have some of those issues and need that extra help. I think the biggest thing and that I'm kind of picking up on is it sounds like based on what I can gather is like K one, two, three are all only inviting based on IEPs. Like no matter what they tested, we're only inviting based on what their IEP states they need, but it sounds like some of our maybe four or five are including what's required on the IEP, but then they're like, oh, they tested below basic, they need other days. And that's, I think, where the confusion is, is some yes. of us are strictly doing, like my kids, if it says two days of ELA and two days of math, that's what they're coming. No matter what they tested, yes, that's what they're coming. Yes. So I think that's right. why we're all jumbled up, confused, and looking at you like, what are we talking about? Yes. Because mm -hmm. that's somewhere along the way we, we reached some confusion with what was right. expected. Okay, so let's all get on the same page. <laughs> yeah. Kelly, Kelly, bring us all together on the same submarine here, honey. What, what do we, how do we fix this though? Because I mean, does it need to be that much different? Are you talking I mean, to me? You guys are, yes, <laughs> yeah. well, I'm talking okay. to Kelly, Kelly, Kelly back. <laughs> Kelly back, cause she, no, I'm sorry, Kelly, I forget. There's two Kellys, that's right. So Kelly, Kelly B, Kelly B, yeah. you, so since you're understanding that, so do the fourth, do the fourth and fifth grade, do they need to do it a different way or does everybody need to do it the same? Would it be easier to track? I mean, I think if everybody was doing the same thing, it would be, would be better. And my mind tends to think if we stuck to strictly what the IEP says, as far as your invites, no matter what we test, then it would be easier to track. Are we providing the correct services? I right. think that's where the, the hang up is coming in and why the, the trackers aren't doing what they're supposed to because then we've got some that, you know, some were marking below basic and TVA and some were not. And mm -hmm. it's just, we're all doing different things. And so I'm kind of like Amber, you know, if I look at mm -hmm. my kids, if I start trying to invite them even more times, they have no time to do no, anything else. Right? No, so that's don't. why I stuck to strictly mm -hmm. whatever it says. And like, mm -hmm. I have a couple of speech only, mm -hmm. then, you know, those few little cases I'll mm -hmm. stick them where, you know, what group I think they do well with, like mine, mm -hmm. they're proficient. So mm -hmm. that's the group I instruct them with. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's what I'm, I'm doing, but my caseload is way smaller. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are we going in and changing our classes again? Because at the moment I have I, I was doing that. I was doing if they tested below basic or basic, they're coming to me four days a week required, even if their IEP states that they're they have two days a week. Because they they truly actually need the instruction. They're not they're testing below basic. I'm sorry, I wasn't sure. So you've got a student that 
is like across currently, the board, like my all of my ESC students on my caseload that tested basic and below basic right now are required for for me. I have them coming four days a week for ELA and four days a week for math for 30 minutes. And they session. and they need that much like they yeah, they're, they're still then I would say we need struggling. to I would say we, we need to adjust the IP to reflect what they need. And then That's, we're still going based on IEP. And I could be wrong. Maybe I'm like a solo, but like, I'm not sure if the other fourth and fifth grade teachers feel this way, but like, I would say it's at least half my caseload. Then I would have to meet, re-meet for IEPs because they're struggling. And I don't know how much of that's that they're struggling, or maybe they don't have enough like at home learning coach support. Maybe they're, you know, try, I, I don't know. Like, I can't tell you why they're struggling for every kid it's different some of them don't have somebody sitting next to them and, the, and some of them do have somebody sitting next to them so th they're definitely struggling in OLS and they're definitely struggling in the four days a week class so I, I'll do whatever we decide as a group to do but I'm just saying from a teacher standpoint I have them right now the majority of my kids come to me four days a week for ELA and four days a week for math but their IEPs are that they are coming to me they're required twice a week but they they, they struggle, they're struggling learners. And <laughs> no, don't ever shut up, Amber. Mm -hmm. Correct. There you go. There you go. It's, see, I think I think the naming convention will will solve a lot of it. Honestly, Amber, can can you clarify the RES and REC again? I, I'm going to send you that. I'm going to send you that, Laura. Okay. It's that. It was that naming convention. Yeah. Um, yeah. That I just showed you a screenshot. I'm going to send you that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you guys will have it. Right. Well, and and here's the, well, and here's the cool thing as far as adding stuff. Remember, parents are all about giving me more, and so those can probably be handled via the written agreement. When you say, "Hey, you know what, Mom? I, I really think I want to add this. Can are you okay with that?" And they're like, "Yeah, it's a mat it's more work on the IEP writer than it is you, because then they have to write the document. We'll add the service, but um, if they truly need it, Amber, you are so right. If that speech kid truly needs." math and small group and reading small group, let's get it in there because the kid deserves that because they're gonna leave you guys and go to middle school, uh, fourth and fifth grade. So we need to make sure that we're, we're making sure they're gonna be followed that way. Does that make sense? So yeah. And that's one reason I was kind of wanting you guys to track the service because if you're tracking, if you're on this little chart, if you're tracking that speech and language person, but you see that you are having to make contacts, they're not passing, they're not, you know, they are needing you to keep with them, then like Amber said, we need to come in there and we do need to add that service to the IEP. Hey, Amber, did you see Donya's question? And I'm kind of the same way. So what if the SLI kid is in the group with the rest of your special ed kids? How do you leave the REC off?
we we are on our groups they're going to be mixed groups look we no, don't like no for example yeah, like, so, like, in our groups, SLI kids are with my special ed kids, so I can't leave REC off, um, and so what I've done is not even, so I haven't grouped, so, for example, I have, like, two or three SLI kids that are in a group. I've just invited them um, how I do my SED kids twice a week with her required, and I haven't gone based off their um, testing from the interims, and I just made their TDA match what I'm inviting them in the class next. So I'm doing that wrong. That was how, that's how I understood to do it. I'm doing the same thing Kim is. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. See. I only yeah. have like three, so that's that won't that won't work different. for us. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. won't work for us. Right. And if, and like Amber said, if it's a group of three speech kids, I mean, you know, being three by themselves might encourage them more to do more speaking, uh, to do more interacting. And so, I mean, small group doesn't have to have 10 kids. It can have just three kids invited. Um, right. 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 No, we understand that. That's what we get. What we're, what we're, our concern is, is even just having three kids in a group, we're going to have a mixed group to where all of the kids are not going to have IEP. So there's going to be some kids in the group that need REC coded and some that do not. And that's just how our numbers are. But you guys are saying we, we need to create a special group for just our SLI kids so they don't have REC on their Class Connect session. Like we need to regroup that basically and pull them out of their our mixed groups. Just speech. I mean, what from what I've been doing, they've excelled in like inviting twice a week for math, twice a week for reading, and it's been doing great. Parents haven't complained. It's been it's been awesome, but. From what I'm seeing, it seems that I need to change that now because of the naming conditions. In the group, so okay. I'm just, I'm confused. So we need to change the IEP just to be able to put the REC at the end of the class? No, okay, okay, hold up. Y'all, okay, first of all, I'm just going to put this out there for everybody. Everybody in this room has 22 or less kids. Amber Chatham has 30. Okay, just throwing it out there. All right, I don't know how you're doing your classes, but let's say I have five, I have 20 kids. Okay, I got 20 kids on my caseload. I can have a group of five at nine o'clock, and that group of five is required for their IEP. I can have five more at 9.30, and guess what? They're not required because their IEP is not requiring it, but it's five different kids. I can have five at 10 o'clock that are required. So, you know, let's don't make it difficult and let's don't get ourselves into this package that we say that I have to do it here and this time. This is the only time I can teach reading and this is the only way I can do it. You know, look at the number of kids you have, okay? Uh, you know, look at your schedules. Don't, don't change anything if they don't need it. What Amber is saying is that if I have a student that's SLI, okay, and they are failing unless they come see me for reading and math twice a week, they are going to fail, okay? If that's the case, then yes, you need to change the IEP because that's telling me that that student requires that service of reading and requires that service of math or they're going to fail. So yes, that IEP needs to be changed. Whether you put REC or you know, number five behind your scale, it's, it's got to change because the, the child needs the service, okay? But if you have that SLI student 
who doesn't need to come every single day, even though they tested below basic, then you can mark them as proficient in TVS. And then they come to the two days of class that you're doing nothing but OLS instruction because I've got my IEP babies Monday and Wednesday who are required to come to me because they have to have it by their IEP. On Tuesday and Thursday, I have those same IEP babies, but they're not required to come to those two days because their IEP is not requiring them, but they still need to come because they need OLS. Now I can pull in that SLI kid on these two days. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So don't, don't change IEPs unless you need to. We're not changing an IEP just to match the name on the, on the, on the class. I just, I feel like it's getting a little confusing, but did that make sense? I mean, Amber, did that make sense? Yeah, well, I was too, Amber. I was trying to help you. <laughs> right. Right. But now, if, no. if, if somebody needs help, though, I can sit down with you and we can look at your, your caseload, we can look at your kiddos, we can look at a schedule, and we can see where to place them and how to place them and how to name them. Does that make sense? Okay, I don't, I don't yeah. want this to be anything hard. I don't want this to be difficult. And I certainly don't want us to make it, you know, confusing. But I know everyone's confused because everyone's been kind of doing something different. But are we all going to do the same thing? Kelly Beck. You're the lead special ed teacher at the elementary. What's what's going on? Are, is everybody understanding? Do you understand, Kelly? I understand. <laughs> I know okay. what to do. Um, yeah, I think I think it just got crazy with us developing our own schedules. Um, that's that's just where the confusion happened. So we'll know for next year. I know what to do. Um, okay. So, um, Miss Mayo, all right. You have an this? RTI kid in a class. That RTI kid is not going to have an IEP, and so he's not going to mess up my numbers. Okay. I'm, I'm mainly looking to make sure that the kid who has an IEP that's supposed to be in there, he's who I'm looking for. Okay. RTI can sit there all day. You can have required small group, and that's the beauty of required small group. See, what gets confusing is the kid with the speech IEP because he does have an IEP. Okay, right. but honey, we can have gen ed sitting with us all day long. I don't care if we can bring 10 gen eds in there, it's fine. But as long as See, my special ed kid's in there, that's all it counts. <laughs> and, and, and I understand if we have a student that has, say, two days a week on their IEP to make sure they're coded REC in two classes a week. Exactly. If we need them to come four, we can still invite them four. Just you don't. Them, you can invite I mean, them every day. I follow, I follow that. It's the other stuff that I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I said, no, don't start changing IEPs just to match the name on the class. No, it's easier to move that. Yeah. Don't do that. But you had me scared. I thought, oh, my God, I can see 30 IEPs coming at us. That's just why, to change that's the why. name. Yes. <laughs> All right. Somebody else had their hand up. Deb? What about the kids? Oh, who's talking? I thought Go ahead, Kim. Kim. I thought Kim was trying to talk. Go ahead, Kim. Kim. Go ahead. Thanks. It was. So, for example, I have two kids that in their IEPs that may say like two times, like twice a week for reading, twice a week for math. But then under like supplementary aids and services, it says that they can, they're not required to come to session. That it, it says like under their services that they don't have to come because like basically they can watch the recording because it's hard for them to sit in class. So, I really only see them doing progress monitoring. So how how does that affect them for those required class connect sessions? Because it does say in the IEP twice a week. Like it'll say like live help. One says live help. One says once a few times for reading, a few times for math. Then it, there's like a discrepancy at the bottom. How the uh, the tracker has a column that says they attended live. Or they watched the recording and several of our students when I pulled their thing they did not attend the live session but they did watch the recording so it does let you know that uh Kim uh it's that you know what I'm talking about okay so uh -huh. you can see that yes yes uh-huh yes ma'am yes. I, I didn't I didn't know that but I 
I was just wondering yeah, I, about that. Yes, I'll I'll show you. Let me uh, I'll pull that over and show you what I'm talking about because I I had that happen. Um, these aren't going to so, show it, but see this uh, this column right here. Uh, see right there. It says recording right there. And so see these these kids attended live. Uh, watch the recording. No, but like I'm of course I, I haven't like you know haven't like uh, sliced it out looking for special ed, but if they've watched the recording, it will say yes right here in this column. I know I'm scrolling, making everybody blind. Uh, well, I could just do it like this. I can just do it like this. Um, so I'm gonna have to go all the way back to the top. There we go. So see these students watch the recording. See where it says yes in that column? Yes, ma'am. So that, that lets you know that that student did, you know, come back and, 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 and do the class. So that's how you'll know that. So, and see, these are required. So this is targeted, so like just the so Bethany they're not Bethany's. coming to class. Mm -hmm. But they're watching that recording. So see, they're absent from live class, but did they watch the recording? Uh, yes, they did. So if you have a student and they watch the recording, then by all means, give them credit for that. Because to me, they, they okay. because that is, and that's why that option is there, but they're still getting that service because they watch the recording, so. And then you have some kids who attend live class and watch recording. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So if they're not, I think I may have a lag. I've had trouble all day and I'm so sorry if I'm ever speaking to you. Um, but if, so like if, if they're not watching the recording, then that's when you, we need to look at, you know, doing something different, like having a meeting, correct? Like if they're, they're not going to class and not, but their OLS progress is good. Okay, you did you did break up Kim, and that's not a problem. But I want to make sure that I understand you. Um, they their OLS progress is good, and they're not watching recordings, and they're not coming to class. Is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if their if their progress is good, and they're not coming to class, and they're not needing you in small group, my next question is, why are you in special ed? Okay, so it's possible. Right. That, I, well, that, it's, it's an autistic baby. Okay, uh huh, right. So, you know, so he's probably there for behavior. Uh, more than likely, we get a lot of kiddos from the brick and mortar setting who are with us for behavior. And so we definitely want to keep him there. So, because at testing time is when that behavior escalates, is when he sees that, because at home, uh, we see a lot of those behaviors disappear because they no longer have all of that stimuli that was causing the behavior in the first place. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is make sure that the IEP is written to address behavior goals or the things that he, social skills. Okay, I, you know, social skills class, I would think would be one he would need to go to. Do you know what I'm saying? Even if it's a one-on-one -on -one with you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I know Kim's got that delay, so I can't tell. <laughs> it, it makes sense. I mean, I get it. Um, uh -huh. I do have a student that's similar to that, and we just held uh -huh. his IEP, and mom wanted, I think Clark wrote it as he would be offered because she didn't want him coming to class. Mm -hmm. um, she just wants total freedom yet. She pushed to get him in the program. So he's just optional on everything. So, and he doesn't come, but, but you're following that IEP. I, I am. I'm following <laughs> it. So, yep. Yep. And, in, go, in, and, and, and in TVA <laughs> to get around that TVA, I, I put, um, there's a non-applicable uh, button. So that's what his level is. Not applicable. There you go. There you I don't go. know if that's okay or not, but that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. I love it. It sounds like you're following the IEP. <laughs> trying. I'm trying. <laughs> um, I did have a question and I, I hope it won't confuse us. So if it will, yes, just too. pretend I didn't ask it. But <laughs> so when we're talking about OLS support, uh -huh. I wanted to clarify with um, with Kelly Wynn and, and with you too, Cynthia, what we're talking about. Our, because we go through our PLCs and we focus on a standard 
in fourth grade each week or, or every two weeks or whatever, you know, when we're following them, trying to update the most and all of that. So when I, I don't really, so we're reteaching OLS skills. So on those OLS support days, am I looking at their OLS and trying to get them to master some things they didn't master? Or am I teaching those standards that we've decided in our PLC that we're teaching that week? What is it you're expecting? I'm gonna let Miss Kelly Wynn respond to that since she has her Um, I don't know, Cynthia, I feel like we have to default to the IEPs. I've always felt like <laughs> we, we have to do one thing for gen ed, but then we also have to accommodate mm -hmm. for special ed, so. Well, and they, well, they have the two days, um, Kelly said ours doesn't have to match, okay. The, but, but Deb, you're talking about the two days of OLS because you have two days of nothing but IEP goals, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. And then I've got, you know, if I'm going to put those, um, I've got one gen ed kid I've got mm -hmm. who doesn't have SLI or anything. And then mm -hmm. I've got three SLI kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, I, if they're going to be in with the other students on those two OLS support days, what do I do? You know, how do I cover that? How do you want me to cover that? On the, on the OLS days, is the OLS the days you're teaching the standards or you're just covering OLS? That's, that's what I'm asking. That's what, I mean, okay. right now I'm, t I'm teaching standards right now right. when I, when I want to do, when they need OLS support, I pull mm -hmm. them for one-on-ones okay. um, and I do it that way. Well, so, that's fine. That yeah. works. Then that okay. works. And that works. And just remember, Gen Ed, Gen Ed can even come to your required small group mm -hmm. with your special ed kids where you're addressing deficits, as long okay. as you're, as long as you're covering those IEPs. But okay. yes, that, I think covering the standard, because you're covering the IEP goals on those required days. And then those other days when you're doing OLS, doing the standards is fine. And then, like you said, pulling them one-on-one, -on -one, which I think is much easier, Debbie, the way you're saying that, to yeah. pull them one-on-one -on -one to do OLS because then you can get specifically what they need. Exactly. Instead yeah. of trying to do that whole group. So I yeah, like that. I've, yeah, I've tried that before and because they're all over the place and then it, it's, right. it's very yeah. difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I was talking with Amber. She's got her, um, she went through and structured her groups um, and group their goals based on standards um, when she was creating her group. So I think that makes it a little bit easier for her to address standards and IEP goals all in one class as well. No, I don't think you'll have <laughs> completely different PLC and DDI. You guys just may not, you may have to spend a little bit more time on a standard or their IEP goal than your gen ed classrooms are going to have to. And that's where, you know, you can go in and um, on your DDI that you're doing, you put that exit ticket that you guys had to work on 
and your results. And then you personalize your PLC for that standard that you feel like you still need to work on that week with your kids um, so that you don't feel like you're um, having to do something. You know, twice a week for 30 minutes. Does the student need every day? Does the student, you know, um, you know, whatever's required. I want to make sure if they, main thing I'm looking for is if they don't need the twice a week, then we can cut back on that required class. Does that make sense? And what we're trying to do, because again, you know, it kind of frees up your time more to do a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I love what Deb said about how she has her small group IEP goals, then the, the small group standards, and then the one-on-ones with the OLS. And to me, that's just the best way to do it. And if I don't have to do so many small group requires, and maybe you just need more OLS help from me, then that's what we need to put in the, the IEP. Does that make sense? Instead of you having to create all these different groups with all these different levels, maybe we have a student who just needs that little bit of extra help with an OLS and it changes from twice a week math, twice a week ELA to, you know, twice a week one-on-one -on -one session for 30 minutes. You know, I mean, it may just get to that. So, okay. All right. And like I said, we're only tracking it for the, the four weeks to make sure. And then when you get to the end of that, then I want you to look at it and you can say, looking at this list, I see now that that like kind of what Amber was saying that this speech student does need to add the reading and math because actually they do better when they're coming to me. They're not going to make it if I don't. Because remember, it's okay. We can add we can add as much as we need to. Okay, as long as we're you know once they qualify, they qualify. All right. So I think we all have it for today. Are we due today at four twelve on two eleven? Don't check with us tomorrow. We might all be confused, right? But hey, that's special ed guys. You know. I used to tell them when I, I'd have to go in and do a, a presentation at the State Department, I'd tell everybody, it took me 10 years to figure it out. I said, you walk in the room and you hear all these acronyms and you hear all this and you're going, huh? Finally, after 10 years, I'm like, oh, I get it now. So, you know, so don't panic if you didn't get it today. If tomorrow you wake up and go, what did we say? Go call Kelly Beck. <laughs> or, or Amber, because they, they got it. They understood. And I hope they did. All right, but uh, no, I'm here to help too, guys. Like I said, I'm not trying to add any extra work to you guys. I don't want to confuse anybody. I want us all to be on the same page. I want us all understanding and, you know, and doing what's best for kids. And if a student does need extra classes, by all means, we want them to have it. So, all right, Kelly, uh, Kelly Beck, Kelly Wynn, do y'all have anything else or anybody? All right, if everybody's, has, if everybody's good, we'll call it a day. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.